cancer thrives in a low vitamin D environment. Let me explain. There's so many different mechanisms on how vitamin D can reduce someone's risk for cancer. So this is really a catch-22 because on one hand, the great importance of vitamin D to help keep you from getting cancer. But on the other hand, if you get cancer, now what? That cancer is going to drive your vitamin D right down to the bottom. Somehow it knows that if you have enough vitamin D, it's very hard for cancer to exist. Number one, vitamin D has the ability to trigger a cell to commit suicide if there's damage to that cell. Because if you think about it, what's cancer? Cancer is a normal cell that converts to a cancer cell because there's some damage to it. Normally what's supposed to happen if that cell is damaged is that it's supposed to commit suicide and get rid of itself. Vitamin D is intimately involved doing the job so it doesn't go into cancer. Number two, vitamin D helps regulate excess out of control cell growth. If the tumor cell cannot get any nutrition at all or resources, it can die. Next one, vitamin D is anti-inflammatory. One of the hallmarks for cancer is inflammation. Vitamin D normally is supposed to get rid of that inflammation. So several of the things that occur with tumors or cancer is number one, inflammation. Number two, a lack of oxygen. And number three, an alteration in the pH. In other words, the environment where tumors thrive is acid. Well, guess what? Vitamin D enhances almost every part of your immune system. Vitamin D also enhances chemotherapy. And vitamin D also helps to make insulin more sensitive. When people have insulin resistance, they're also greater at risk for getting cancer. Vitamin D actually downgrades genes that cause cancer. And vitamin D greatly supports the gut microbiome that also is like 80% of your immune system. That's what vitamin D can do. Now, let's talk about what cancer does. In a cancer cell, you have inflammation, that lack of oxygen called hypoxia, and you also have an environment where it's very, very acidic. All three of those things block the absorption of vitamin D. They don't allow vitamin D to work. Cancer also blocks the enzymes that help you convert the inactive vitamin D to the active form of vitamin D directly. When you get cancer, there's a lot of damage that occurs to the liver and the kidney. The two very important sites where you have vitamin D metabolism. Then there's one more important piece of the puzzle before I get into the solution, okay? And this involves four little tiny glands around your thyroid called the parathyroid gland. Let me explain what that is. So I wanna show you something very interesting about tumors and cancer. 80% of tumors make this specific hormone, which is very similar to the one that we have in the parathyroid gland. Let me just make this really simple. Para means next to thyroid. You have four of them. So the thyroid's right here, and you got four little glands are called the parathyroid. The reason why this cancer makes this hormone right here is mainly to extract calcium from the bone because the purpose of the parathyroid gland is to make sure you have enough calcium in your blood. Cancer somehow is able to make this specific hormone to extract calcium from our bone. This is one of the factors that you'll see in cancer is high levels of calcium in the blood. They call it hypercalcemia. And now you know why, because that darn cancer is making this hormone, it's extracting it from our bones, as well as other resources from the bones as a survival mechanism. But here's the problem. This hormone, when it goes up, actually lowers and inhibits your vitamin D. Too much calcium in the blood will also inhibit vitamin D. So now we got two other additional things that suppress this vitamin D. As you can see, on top of all the other barriers, having genetic problems, having vitamin D resistance from a microbe or an infection, when we get cancer, the need for vitamin D goes straight up and vertical. Let's talk about a solution. There are two systems of vitamin D. Vitamin D affecting your bone and calcium. Okay, but there's another system that doesn't involve calcium. It doesn't involve your bone. It involves supporting your immune system. The bone system can get by with a small amount of vitamin D once every two weeks. The other system needs higher amounts in daily amounts. For cancer, you wanna go way up from 10,000. You wanna do 50,000 I use. 
every single day with the magnesium, with the K2, with the zinc. And I want to make a disclaimer. I am not telling you that this is going to cure your cancer. I am just giving you some additional information, especially since the World Health Organization even acknowledges that vitamin D has anti-carcinogenic properties. It's also interesting to other inflammatory conditions like autoimmune diseases. You have this lowered amount of vitamin D3 because vitamin D3 doesn't work when you have a lot of inflammation, you need to take more. There's quite a few other diseases that you nearly always have low amounts of vitamin D3 in. Autoimmune diseases, osteoarthritis, which is not an autoimmune, but it's an inflammatory disease, TB, tuberculosis, HIV. I talked about part of the solution of just taking more vitamin D3. And so now I'm gonna give you a list of all the things that I research, and I'm gonna put the research down below in the description. And these are all epigenetic factors, okay? Things that you can take either supplements or lifestyle changes or even foods, okay? Number one, magnesium. That's a big one. Omega-3 fatty acids, as in fish oils or cod liver oil. Then we have resveratrol. Next one is quercetin. Those are in onions and different herbs. Curcumin from turmeric. Berberine, also good for blood sugar, can help increase the vitamin D receptor. Intense exercise, as a lifestyle change, can help increase the vitamin D receptor. Sulforaphane in broccoli sprouts. Ginger, fasting and intermittent fasting. Doing things to make insulin more sensitive, going on a lower carbohydrate diet. When you have insulin resistance with diabetes, that can also lower your ability to absorb vitamin D3. Probiotics can also help with vitamin D. Or just exposing yourself to certain light frequencies like infrared can increase melatonin, and melatonin helps your absorption of vitamin D. Interesting. Decreasing your stress, because high levels of cortisol and adrenaline can lower your absorption of vitamin D3. Because I'm talking about high levels of vitamin D3, I think it's very important to understand the toxicity factor. And if you have not seen this video, you should check it out. I'll put it up right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book 
and this updated one right here, if you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.